Welcome to The Authentic Spiritual Journey, a weekly podcast featuring real and practical spiritual conversations from diverse perspectives here on the Experience of the Soul podcast channel. Today, episode 235, Stress-Free Christmas. And now your host, Rev. Cynthia Alice Anderson. Hello and welcome to The Authentic Spiritual... <laughs> It's, hey, you're you're living, you're 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 living your shirt, you're living your sweatshirt. I'm not going to edit this out. This is how it goes. Okay, because so, we want to be stress free, right? Oh, <laughs> I, I just want to I, I just want to tell the listeners why <laughs> why we're cracking up at the beginning of this. This is now our fourth take Good. trying to just start the the show that we've done now 235 times. Like we've never done it before. I know. And it just is, I don't know. So, so yeah. This And my sweatshirt does, well, it's, it's a sweater. It does say across the front, happy. happy. So we're going to go with yeah, it. Yeah. So we're just going to, I'm just going to, we're just going to roll with it. Just roll with it. <laughs> uh, so welcome. Let's try that again. Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Authentic Spiritual Journey. My name is Cynthia Alice Anderson. I'm the host. I've been the host for many years and, <laughs> and will be for years to come. And I'm here today in 818 Studios with my good friend and producer. Good morning, everybody. This is Dave Croft. I hope you are doing well, and I hope you're happy. And I'm hope I hope that you're feeling. I hope you're feeling the energy. We're just I don't know. We're just we just roll with it. We take whatever life hap- life gives us, and we just go with it. That's the key to living a stress free life and having a stress free uh, Christmas. Is you just go with it. The best right. laid plans. Well, you know, we talked about that last year, stress-free yep. Christmas, and so this is take two in yep. our household, and I was talking to somebody about it the other day, and she just burst out laughing. She said, I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> I said, well, I can help you with that. So um, so stress-free Christmas is how we're doing it, and yes, Dave, you said it. You know, this just settling into life to myself to who I am and who God is, who who I'm here to be. And it's, uh, there's a line in the old Western that says, it gets real simple real quick. <laughs> and getting real simple real quick for me is just settling in and being. And, you know, I I don't know if it's age. I don't know if it's that my life experience, my work as a minister, I don't know. But I am at the point now where if it doesn't feel right to me, it, it is not going to happen. Mm. It doesn't matter who is expecting it and what, no. Or, or and, what expectations you put on yourself that you think oh, yeah, you wanted. Yeah, it's almost, yeah. Yeah, it's almost always self-imposed, mm. the expectations. Yes, you're right about that. And just being at peace with that. And it, it happened recently where I had a dear friend coming to town I say coming to town. She only lives over in Clearwater, but she was coming to Orlando unexpectedly. And uh, so, no, she was coming to Orlando. <laughs> I knew she was coming. And then uh, I I had family in town unexpectedly, right? So my schedule was really disrupted, and I loved having my family in town. But right after they left, I wasn't feeling well. You know, because they were in town for the holiday, and there was a lot that we were doing at Thanksgiving, and it was a blast. I loved every second of it. I wrote another song, and my brother-in-law helped me with the song. It was just fun. We laughed a lot. But anyway, after they left, I wasn't feeling too good. And so this dear friend was coming to in Orlando, and I completely forgot. And then when she texted me, oh, hey, I'm going to be there. Can we get together? I said, well, let me see how I feel right now. I just, I'm not feeling very good. And I'll tell you, even, even just a couple years ago, I would have pushed myself to do it. And well, with COVID and all those things, I thought, you know, number one, it's not a good idea to push myself, <laughs> but I don't want to endanger her. She has some health challenges. And, you know, I, I said to myself, do I want to do this? Does it? You know, the question I always ask is, is this going to bring me peace to do this? And it was like, no. And honestly, as soon as I said to her, hun, I'd love to come see you, but I'm just not feeling up to it. And she said, oh, my gosh, you're in my prayers. No worries. You know, and and I said, as, as much as I want to, I just I can't. 
And honestly, as soon as I told her no, I started feeling better. I don't know if it was a combination of expectations on myself, if it was just tiredness, if I was fighting a bug. But what I know is that decision it gave me so much peace. I could just relax the rest of the day. And that's exactly what I did. Well, good thing, because I woke up ready to do what was mine to do the next day, which is this show <laughs> that we're recording <laughs> right now. <laughs> so I am happy. I'm in a great mood. I'm still, you know, um, getting over whatever this little, it was like a 24 hour bug, it seems like. But just listening to that inner guide of this is mine to do or not mine to do. Yeah. Really help facilitate healing. I think more, more quickly. So. And, and, and I'm sure your friend had zero issue with that. Like it's, it's no, true, it's no, no problem. She in did in not. fact, she did not. if she knew that you had like met up with her and knowing how it was just kind of, you know, you weren't up to it and you just kind of muscled through, you know, if she knew that that's kind of the inner <laughs> turmoil you were going through, she would probably be really, you know, hurt for you. Like, Hey, no, you don't have to. Oh, exactly. To no, no, no. She's a, and she's a deep spiritual student. I didn't even need to go into a single detail. She was like, Oh my gosh. Cause she knows I love her. Yep. She was so important on my journey. And we still talk, you know, every two, three weeks we have a power Hour talk. Yeah, it's, it's like at least an hour. You think know? of how you would react to your friend saying that to you, and then exactly. Well, of course, that's how your your friend is going to treat it when you reciprocate, or if you, or if you have to cancel plans, yes, or if you have yeah. to change something. Well, it, yeah, it happened with another friend who couldn't. He could not do Thanksgiving, and I said, "I'm glad you listened to your body. It's you know, it's okay. It's okay." Mm -hmm. I said, "And if anybody gets mad at you for taking care of yourself, they're not really your friend after all." It's true. There are other things happening there. <laughs> there are other things happening there, exactly. So, but but we do live in a society that that is largely based on what people think. Well, and, and especially, and we've talked, you know, on the show about you know expectations and family obligations, especially around the holidays. You know, of what you're expected to do because this is what we've always done or whatever. And I get that. You know, one of the things that that is typically a source of stress for me is actually, and I talked about it just a few weeks ago, you know, decorating. And uh, I don't necessarily enjoy decorating, but I really enjoy having decorated. <laughs> right. You really enjoy when it's done. <laughs> yes. Um, but some of the things that I've done to simplify is like the lighting outside, like all, yeah, all of right, that. Yeah, right, right, right. Our neighborhood it's almost kind of expected, but even even that doesn't feel pressure. I just know that Shannon loves it, and I, I love it when it happens. But I found a way that I can do it, knock it out pretty quick. I'm happy with it. Just run some lights. I don't get on right. to like ladders and, you know, right, right, Griswold, right, right. Clark Griswold going up on the roof <laughs> right. or anything like that. But I find a way that that, that works really well for me. Uh, another source of stress is that we have cats and cats and Christmas trees and cats oh, yeah. and Christmas trees with literal cat toys hanging off of every branch. I mean, and, and, and so we have a cat named Alan who is a mess. And he's really the first cat who has just gone full bore cat, like tree, literally climbing up the tree. And so this year we've decided that we're not going to put any ornaments on the tree. We've put some garland and we put some large decorative kind of things into it. But what mm -hmm. we're not going to do is hang all of the ornaments that we feel we should because it's beautiful when we do it. <laughs> right. But we spend the entire month of December either fussing at the cat, hearing an, a, a precious exactly. ornament break, you know, that's irreplaceable. So we're just, we're going to give him another year, see if Alan can grow up another year. And uh, I don't know, it might be, it might be uh, 15 years before we put <laughs> ornaments back out, but we've just decided Exa this year cares? that we're not going to. It's your tree. So that's right. <laughs> Well, you know, last year we didn't even do a tree. We did, uh, I have this, it's pretty large for a plant. It's a Norfolk Island pine mm -hmm. and it's in a big, you know, pot that's probably, I don't know, 18 inches across, right? So it's pretty large flower pot and it's out on our back porch. And I did one tiny little string of white lights and like six ornaments that were like weatherproof. And Josh and I loved it. That was an awesome. Uh, that was an awesome Christmas for us. And there was something kind of Charlie Brownish about it. <laughs> I was about it was to like say a Charlie, Charlie Brown, Brown Christmas. Uh, you know, 
my home is not large. I have a beautiful, I'm, I'm in a, a, I'm the small house in the upscale neighborhood <laughs> and I love this home and I love this neighborhood. And I finally figured out where I am going to put a tree this year. So pretty excited about, uh, about going to get one. But anyway, yeah, it's, it's all those choices mm -hmm. that you're saying, Dave, are so important and it's so important for you to feel good about it rather than some internal push to do it. And, you know, I was thinking back, uh, especially having family here, I was really reminiscing about some of the great memories of my childhood. And we, we, when I'm with my sister and especially her husband, he's, he is constantly talking and joking. And so it's hard not to be laughing all the time. But I was thinking back to some of our family traditions, you know, that were really great. And then I remembered uh, one Christmas where uh, my dad was really sick. My grandmother had this stuff going on and I decorated, I, this, you know, I don't know, I was like probably 14. <laughs> I decorated the entire house. I put up the tree and I wrapped all my mom's presents, including my own, including my own. I wrapped my own presents. And I remember thinking, this is no, you know, bleep. You need to bleep that <laughs> fun, <laughs> you know? And, and, um, but you know, it's what you did. It's what you did. Well, I don't want my son growing up with that. And part of what I've learned as a parent is, however I am, no matter what I say about it, however I am is what my son will learn and do. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't like stress. I don't know a single kid who says, yes, let's be <laughs> stressful maniacs around the holidays and call it the most wonderful time of the year. They think we're nuts when we mm -hmm. do that. It's like, well, what is all this about? You know? So... So for me this year and for our home, it's really about, yeah, stress-free Christmas. And, you know, somebody said, well, is it completely stress-free? I said, probably not, but that's the goal. That's the goal. <laughs> well, that's life. I don't know. I mean, life. Like, <laughs> it's called life. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I anybody is going to ever say, oh, I have zero stress. I don't think you'd be living in 2022 <laughs> if you said you had zero. But it's about <laughs> identifying the things that you can kind of pull back on. For example, hanging the ornaments on the tree, yeah. if it's going to mean a, a, an entire month of uh, of anxiety yeah, exactly. Based off of, Not worth know, it. Babysitting this this Christmas tree, and so uh, so far <laughs> it's been up a couple of weeks, and it's like zero issues. He, we can't keep a tree skirt under it, but you know, right. <laughs> at least that's not an ornament from my, you know, departed grandmother. <laughs> the, the, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? That's going to break and shatter, and that that's a whole other bag of issues as far as broken things. But um, yeah, and so what it also means that we were, we were able to put out a lot more uh, like table decorations, especially because... Oh, uh, yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, yeah because... Uh, Shannon's sister and brother-in-law and their two kids usually come down around the holidays. And yeah, so they right, live right. in Oklahoma That's right. now, so they're not coming they're down. They're not coming down, Which right. means we could put all the little tiny snowmen and Santa Clauses. We have, so it, it kind of looks like Hallmark Village a little bit, like every square <laughs> open, but the cats don't mess with that. And so, and so that's the trade-off, I think, yep. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, and, you know, I think for all of us, family traditions kind of got blown out of the water with COVID. That's true. Because, uh, you know, families that had gotten together always, you know, suddenly weren't. So it probably will be another year of, you know, of that being, you know, of that being different. Uh, but I think it's probably good that the, you know, that old phrase of upsetting the apple cart, um, I think change is always good and healthy. Yeah. Um, you know, in my neighborhood, I live, because I live in this older, it's probably, I would venture to say the oldest downtown neighborhood in Orlando. You know, it's cobblestone streets. It's very quaint. Hell on your car, but it's very quaint. <laughs> I do <laughs> and, not enjoy you know, driving through your neighborhood. <laughs> right. It's beautiful to look at. Um, but, I mean, we even still in this neighborhood have a progressive dinner at Halloween. There's like a Halloween parade for the kids. And so there are things that uh, uh, remind you of what might have been done 50 years ago. I mean, that's how long, 100 years ago, that's how long some of this stuff has been happening, yeah. you know, in this neighborhood. So I still get a handwritten note about what you want to bring for, uh, you know, the progressive dinner. Of course, normally I'm working. So I was like, 
could I possibly participate this year? But I just love that it happens. I love mm-hmm. that that's my neighborhood and that it still happens. So anyway, I may be digressing, but stress-free for me is a state of happiness. It really, to get back to that. And what makes you happy is going to be different than what makes me happy. And what's so cool about our individual journey is, as we're tapping in and listening to our inner voice, we trust that. We don't have to have a priest or a minister or a rabbi tell us. We know. You know, we know. But for me, this season is about love and joy and peace. It's also about bringing in this this quiet, beautiful energy. And with all the hubbub of the gifts and the have-tos, sometimes that, well, I would say it almost always gets lost in all of that. And, you know, all the traditions of the gifts, even the colors of the thing we use, all relate back to Jesus's birth. These are not things that are just done willy-nilly. And I've, you know, given messages on it and things in the past. But my my basic learning is that, you know, to, to boil it down, is that this is to be a season of peace. And the gifts we give are symbols of the gift of the Christ child, right? So it's why I often talk about giving gifts that are handmade, or I'll talk about giving gifts that are really spiritually guided. Like that last week was about, you know, spiritually guided giving and thinking about, praying about even where do I go to shop and then praying about what can I give that's special this year. You know, nobody needs another fuzzy lampshade, so, but but something done with thought, with feeling, with love, with generosity, with grace, with forgiveness. These are the type of gifts to be giving. Or is like, is there something of yours that's that you have that you could give to a family member that would be really meaningful and you could give them a story about it, a family story? To me, this is what makes Christmas, not who can spend the most money and go into the most debt. Mm. You know, so I hope you're not going into debt this Christmas. I hope you are, you know, mindful. I hope you are at peace. I my Our prayer for you is that you are just sensing what's yours to do and moving into this space of grace for yourself and for your family. And just realizing it's just drop all those have tos. It's it when you start doing when I started doing it, I'll speak for me. When I started doing that for the first time, well, I remember like when I the first time, and I've talked about this a little bit, when I decided not to go to Georgia for a holiday, it was so freeing. I felt like I like scales were falling off. I mean, it was just like, oh, you know, just the weight of all that have to dropped away. Well, I think if I would not have really listened to my soul there, it'd be harder to do what I'm doing now. And But now, just this idea of, you know, if it's bringing me stress, it's probably not mine to do. Um, and and what's so interesting about this whole idea, and I stay with me if you can on this, because so I was preparing for my family to come into town. I told you they were here, and it was it was a blast. Well, they ended up, leaving a little later than I thought. And I'd kind of rearrange my day so that I wasn't working when they arrived. But, you know, I four traffic holidays, they hit all this traffic and we're running late. Well, long story short, I had this amazing opportunity come forward that um, I had this amazing opportunity come forward and I'm going to be helping a, um, a sports organization uh, a sports organization with motivational stuff that works with kids. And I'm going to be going and doing inspiration like I've done with Orlando Minority Youth Golf Association, only this is with basketball mm. for kids. And the man who runs the program, you know, was professional uh, basketball star. He's played all over the world in Israel and Syria and just all over the world, Asia. I mean, he's played everywhere. Amazing. And his wife's amazing. And they have an amazing young boy. Anyway, I've known uh, all of them for several years. Anyway, long story short, if I would not have been really in the flow, that never could have happened. (laughs) I mean, like the the number of things that had to line up for me to be able to go. And not only was I able to go and meet with him, I met with a whole team of coaches that have whole programs. And now now, uh, they're taking kids to Taiwan on a cultural exchange program to play basketball 
And I got to meet the guy who's organizing all of that. And not only <laughs> that, I got to meet the sheriff who's in charge of the uh, the police league, basketball league. Anyway, it was just one opportunity after another that was packed into one hour. And now I'm going to be able to support their efforts to go to Taiwan, as well as uh, it was an opportunity to potentially go into uh, this man's business because he had never heard of me and I had never heard of him. But it turns out we know a lot of the same people because he's very involved in the area of a, a Orlando suburb called Kissimmee. It's not really a suburb. What is Kissimmee? I guess it's its own city. Yeah, it's its own city, but I, I, I would, I would call it a suburb for sure. I mean, that's how I think of it. But I do know a city commissioner there, and I've worked with imams in that area. And it's like, okay, Spirit really wants me for whatever reason right now to do some work in Kissimmee. So, but why am I saying all this? Well, if I was overplanned and overstressed, which sometimes I have to be very planned because I support people. My my schedule is every 50, you know, on the hour, I am either seeing someone, I'm talking to my president of the Leadership Council at church. You know, I have a variety of things I do, or I'm planning for a podcast, right? So my schedule has to be not regimented, but scheduled. So when I just made space in my schedule, it was like, you know what, this is family time. I want to clear my afternoon so I'm present for my family. And then it was like this text, can you come here today to do blah, blah, blah. And it was like, well, yes, I can. <laughs> you know, It was just so wild. And such a God, such a, well, I call those a God job. There, there's, there's just no way my mind could have thought of all that. And I got to spend time with the kids. I got to do their prayer at lunch and I got to communicate with all of them. And the coach said, she's going to come back and do some stuff. So I'm really excited in the new year to be supporting kids because frankly, I really miss working with kids. I really miss teaching. I love being around kids. So it, uh, it's going to be a great opportunity, and I really feel, and it's not it's not for money, friends. This is a way for me to give my gifts, right? This is a way for me to give my gifts. But what I know is every time I give my gifts, other opportunities come. So like the business one, I've already heard from him again. You know, so God is in charge, but we have to make space. And not being in stress, not being overscheduled really, really helped me do that. And it was a real gift to just watch that whole activity. I felt like all I did was show up. And that was like, well, why don't you tell the coaches what you do? Okay. You know, sure, I can do that. Why don't you tell, you know, this business leader what, what it is you do and how you can support our trip to Taiwan. But friends, this is what I'm talking about, reaching the world. And it's the kids that are going to change the world. For our generation, it's almost over. It's it's the kids' turn. They're gonna they're gonna be the one that changes the world. Yeah. They're gonna be the ones, right, that give us a new way of seeing things. It's like you know, you know, uh, for a while kind of the millennial generation was kind of the 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 totem of of irresponsible yeah. kids or whatever. The millennials are forty. The young the oldest millennial turns mm -hmm. forty this year. Yeah, and exactly. so they're they're ready. They're decision makers. They're business owners. They're in yep. politics, and yeah, yep. Things are gonna things are gonna be changing, and you know, even so, it's interesting you mentioned politics because what I want to mention here is that I'm in a different place politically and socially than I thought I might be at this age. And I'm not going into any detail about it right now, but I find in general that the two parties are very calcified and are so pushing narratives that require 100% buy-in on every word. And I'm not about that. So I'm thinking for myself, 
I want you to think for yourself. And if you believe every word of it, go for it. But I am very concerned at the push of these narratives from both sides that you believe. And uh, like, if you don't believe every word they say, you're suddenly demonized. If you don't believe every word the Democratic Party says, you know, you hate, that means you hate gay people and black people. If you're, uh, you b- don't believe everything the Republicans say, you're non-Christian. You know, it, it, this is, uh, no, no. So again, trying to fit myself into one of those boxes was stressful for me. And I realized I don't have to fit into either one. I can have my own beliefs that are also not driven by a by somebody's narrative. I go to God. I'm not on websites and getting, you know, just more support for this single narrative. I'm looking for truth always. So that's bringing me a lot of peace and a lot of joy as well. So you see what I'm saying about the stress-free? It's like thinking for myself. It's it's going to God with my decisions. And what's so interesting is in my client base, the people that I'm drawing, the leaders, I mean, I'm impressed with the leaders that, you know, I have the privilege of working with. They're in the exact same place. They say these, these ideologies are not where I am. So, so yeah, stress-free. Stress-free for me means I'm quieting the outer voices of have tos and shoulds. Yeah. Stress free means I'm quieting those outer voices of have tos and shoulds. And it's showing up in a number of places in my life. And I'm going to share one kind of funny one. So, probably by the time this airs, I'm going to have a new vehicle. <laughs> and I'm going to get something I've wanted for a really long time. But I'm shopping right now, so I can't say for sure. But uh, I'm going to look at a couple this week. And it's really fun for me to come out of, uh, it's really fun for me to allow myself to want this. I I don't know if this makes any sense what I'm saying. But, you know, Dave, I remember when you got a motorcycle and what a big deal that was. This is kind of like that for me, even though nobody was holding me back but me, right? Right. You know, I mean, what? I, I don't know. But I just did not allow myself. So somehow moving into more self-love and self-acceptance over the last, uh, definitely over the last year or so, this has been a really important process for me that just knowing whatever I desire is okay. <laughs> are, are you going to make us guess or is it, are you teased? No, like in my mind, I'm like, uh, yeah, is it a no. dune buggy? What? <laughs> you're not far off no 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 although i did ride one of those when i was a kid those are fun oh my gosh were those fun (laughs) now i'll let you know uh i'll let you know when i buy it not yet not yet i'm not far enough along to let you know but okay but i hopefully you're hearing and feeling my excitement about it until until i hear otherwise in my my mind my head canon is it's a doom buggy (laughs) <laughs> like with big eyelashes on the on the on the uh, on the. I can't lights. believe you said that because when I was a kid, we had this crazy golf cart and it had a fa- face painted on the front <laughs> yeah. with these eyelashes. Of course, now it didn't run, but that didn't bother us. We just pushed it up the hill and wrote it. Wrote it down. It wrote it down. <laughs> I am writing. Um, that's been another activity that I've been enjoying over the last year, which is I've been writing stories. And uh, my my family stories has a name, and I, I've started uh, sending some of the stories. I've started sending some of the stories to my siblings, and they loved it. Mm. And I wish I was surprised because it's all from my perspective. I'm not naming them. I say my sister, my brother, you know, but it's all from like a little kid perspective. Mm-hmm. So a different voice comes out in me and my in the writing, uh, different than I've ever kind of allowed myself to experience and that's been a that's been a lot a lot of fun and then i i sent it to i guess two or three people outside of the family and they also loved it so i'm not sure what's ever going to happen with the stories but what i what i know is that it gives me great pleasure and joy 
and somehow it's healing for me, right? So that's what I mean about stress-free. I don't know why, but I was just really guided to start writing down these stories and it feels good. My son showed me how to use a Google Doc, <laughs> right, for the very first time. Nice. So, <clears throat> so yeah, happy and stress-free, friends, is how we're meant to go through life, Yeah, you know? And pretty much, now let me say it this way, everything I teach has a scriptural basis, believe it or not, for those of you that are Bible-based. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Not, I came that you might suffer. You know, this is a modern idea that um, all these shoulds and have tos, they're probably mostly based in Puritan ideals. And in fact, life is meant to be enjoyed. Life is meant to be full of joy and peace and hope and connection. You know, life is meant to be lived knowing you're loved, knowing you're supported by the universe, knowing that God loves you. It's pretty simple. So I hope this season you'll spend some time just being, making space and seeing how spirit fills it in with, you know, cool opportunities or, you know, joyful connections or, you know, more uh, guidance for your journey. My hope for myself in this season is to know more of my own goodness. And I know that through the light of the Christ, obviously, that that the light of the Christ lives in me, is all around me. I'm never outside of it. But the idea is that I know more of it in my own life, but that cannot be forced. It cannot be coerced. And it certainly is not a have to. Right. It only comes in those times of quiet, those times of peace, those times of going inward, just resting and knowing, you know, God is all there is. And that light lives in me. So, friends, this is my hope for you during this beautiful holiday season. Whether you are Christian or Jewish, this is the season of light. All right. So we're blessing you. We're sending love your way. And as always, we thank you for your financial support. It's because of your support that we are on the air. And there's a word, of course, about our financial campaign. Any way you can support that is very, very appreciated. We feel we are giving a gift to the world through our messages. We're honored to do it, and we're blessed by your support. So thanks again for joining us today, dear friend, and blessings on the journey. Merry Christmas. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey here on the Experience of the Soul podcast channel. This channel is made possible because of listeners just like you. If you would like to support the channel with your tax-deductible contribution on an ongoing basis or through a one-time gift, head over to experienceofthesoul.com support. The Authentic Spiritual Journey is copyright 2022, Cynthia Alice Anderson, all rights reserved. Our theme music is composed by Dave Croft and used with permission from RR Hot Publishing. The Experience of the Soul podcast channel is a production of 818 Studios.